Where should a good quality sword balance? Thanks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatore. Now, if you don't know me, I run historical fencing clubs. I do lots of research into swordsmanship and swords, and I'm an antique sword dealer as well. And obviously I run this channel also. Now, this is a question I get asked a lot, and I have covered this in previous videos, but I thought I'd try and do a concise uh, response to where should a good sword um, balance. And, you know, if you've seen something like Pirates of the Caribbean, you might be under the impression that a really well-balanced sword should balance at the cross guard or very close to the hand. And this is a misconception. The basic fact is that all swords will balance in different places relative to what they're intended to do. And the basic rule, I'm going to try and keep this as simplistic as possible, so I'm going to brush over some of the caveats and exceptions to the rule, but the basic rule is a sword which is designed primarily for chopping and cutting will balance further from the hand and a sword which is intended to have a lots of point control and do lots of thrusting will balance closer to the hand. However, some people take this too far and they think therefore that a sword which is a cutting sword will always balance far from the hand and a sword which looks like a thrusting sword, and it, you know, something like a rapier or a small sword, always balances very close to the hand and this isn't the case. And actually the headline that I want to get over here is actually an awful lot of swords, not all swords, but an awful lot of swords balance around here. Okay, so actually it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a medieval arming sword or a long sword or a falchion, whether you're talking about a renaissance um, uh, back sword or a rapier or a later kind of industrial revolution era small sword or a sabre or something like this. Most swords throughout history, and this goes around the world as well, this could apply to Indian talwars or Japanese katana or Chinese dao or jian. The majority of swords from ancient period all the way up to the modern day, because swords are still being made for parade purposes, but were certainly still being used in World War I and World War II to some extent, balance around here. And the main reason for that is that if you make something of the characteristics of a sword, if you want it to be able to cut and thrust, or indeed just to do one or the other of those things, often what you'll end up with is a balance point around here. And if you put it too close to the hand, it will actually impede it being an effective weapon. So even in fact for thrusts, even if we balance it very close to the hand, you'll think, oh, well, that will make the point very, very nimble. But what it actually does is give you no feeling in the blade. Now, when you hold a lever that's like a long stick or any kind of lever basically in your hand, you have a certain amount of feeling in the blade. And the closer you bring the point of balance to the hand, the less feeling you have in the blade, and the less, therefore, you can control the bind against an opponent's blade, and this kind of thing. So, uh, there, is, there are various physical advantages to having a point of balance around here. Now, this is a replica, this is an Albion Lancaster. I don't own any, any original medieval swords, unfortunately, so I can't use those for illustrative purposes. But because I'm an antique dealer, I do own lots of other antique swords from the Renaissance onwards. So what we're going to look at here is a, just a cross-section of swords randomly that I've picked off my, my walls here. And we can apply this, I can assure you, we can apply this to lots of swords uh, like Katana, Wakasashi, uh, Talwa, Dao, other types of swords from around the world, African swords, Asian swords, and it, the same rules will apply. So although we're looking here at mostly European swords, actually two, two out of six of these are not European, but although we're looking at a small uh, cross section of six swords here, this does give a general impression. So this is a um, mid 19th century officer's sabre to be used by the Royal Horse Artillery. So it's not quite a cavalry sabre, and it's not an infantry officer's sabre. It's kind of a bit in, in between the two. It's more like a cavalry sword. Now, um, all of these swords will be oiled after I film this video, so don't worry about the swords and me putting my um, hands on them, my grubby mitts. And you'll notice that balances about six inches from the guard. This is quite typical for a cavalry sabre, that's why I picked this one up. Some cavalry sabres balance further from the guard, some balance closer to the guard, but that's kind of fairly common. Um, now, <clears throat> a type of sword which was used in a similar fashion, a cut and thrust sword, from the same era. This is actually a Victorian Highland officer's basket hilted sword, but it's very similar to 18th century and in fact 17th century types of sword as well and has similar characteristics. Now you'll notice this has a large full basket hilt. So clearly you've got more metal at the back of the 
sword so you would think therefore that it might balance very very close to the hilt and in fact some basket hilt swords do however if we look for the balance point it's about four inches from the guard. So even this with a great big whopping great basket hilt still balances about a hand's width away from the guard, okay? Now we'll go to a different sword, similar era. This is a 19th century Indian uh, version of a Persian sword. So it's like a Shamshir, but this is an, an Indian version. It's a bit like a cross between a Shamshir and a Kilich actually, uh, but it's uh, Indo-Persian. Now this is interesting because this, I picked this specifically for this reason, balance is really quite far from the hand. That is about eight or nine inches from the guard. Now you'll notice this has a minimalistic hilt. It doesn't have a big hand guard. And this is really designed to give very fearsome chops. So that, I won't say it balances the furthest from the hand of any sword, but that is about as far away from the hand as most types of swords balance. Okay, so this is at the extreme end. But you'll notice I said most swords balance around this region. Well, this does, but it's about the furthest out from the hand of that region. Now, I pick another interesting sword here. This is a Kilich style blade on a, but it's short and small, and this is called a Parang Nabur. And this is from Indonesia primarily. And if we look at the balance point on this, again, you'll notice proportionately to the uh, size of the weapon. It actually balances about a third of the way up the blade. But look at the shape of the blade. This is clearly a chopper. This is designed to give fearsome great big old chops. So um, absolutely this type of blade therefore does balance further away from the hand. It's got a minimalistic hilt, not very much mass in the hilt so we can understand why. And you look at the blade type, it is designed as a chopper. Now a couple to finish off, a couple that might surprise you. First up I have here an original uh, mid 17th century English rapier. Now I think a lot of people are under the impression that rapiers only thrust and that they balance very very close to the hand. Rapiers are very very diverse and they're also heavier than most people think they are in general. So most people I think they think of rapier they think of something like a modern fencing epee. They're certainly much heavier than that but um, they and they are often they do often have cut and thrust blades on them so a rapier isn't only a thrusting weapon in most cases it usually has some cutting capacity some rapiers don't uh, but the majority can cut and thrust it's just they've sacrificed some of the cutting ability for enhanced reach and um, point control so so they are longer and narrower blades so a lot of people would think this would balance right close to the hilt and in fact there we go it balances about the same as the basket hilted broadsword, which might surprise some people. It balances about four, maybe five inches from the guard for a number of reasons. One, you will still want to be able to cut with this sword. It's not gonna shear limbs off, but it will certainly to the, the neck or the face or the thigh give a fairly nasty cut. And it's got the cross section for it. Um, but also it's to do with the feeling in the blade and the way that the, the um, sword moves and um, reacts against other blades and actually a small detail this is actually a hollow pommel so they could have put a heavier pommel on this sword but they elected to put a hollow pommel on so that it wouldn't balance too far back and the final sword and this might surprise some so this is an 18th probably early 18th century um, Kolishmad small sword with a thickened blade at the base but a lot of people, and again, if you watch Pirates of the Caribbean, would think a small sword. This is a purely thrusting sword. This is a triangular blade. You cannot cut with it. It's a bit like an epee. And a lot of people would think that these balance right by the guard um, or even in the hilt. And they don't, like almost never. Um, and if we balance this, yes, it is closer to the hilt, but it's still about two inches, maybe two and a half inches um, from the guard. So it's still in front of the guard. So there we go. It doesn't, you know, there are exceptions. There are occasionally swords that balance very close to the hilt. I've actually seen, uh, there's a number of medieval arming swords from the Castillon Horde that balance quite close to the hilt. And they look like big, chunky, choppy swords, but they balance really close to the hilt, which is quite unusual. They've got quite big, heavy pommels on them. Uh, and sometimes swords balance further out than you think you're, they're going to. And I think prob probably some of you will be surprised by how far out the small sword and the rapier balance. But the fact is that most swords from most periods in most parts of the world have a point of balance around here, somewhere between about two inches up to about 10 inches of the base of the blade. 
and exceptions that fall outside that are, relatively speaking, rare. I hope this has been interesting and useful. Uh, give me a like if so, and I hope I'll see you back on the channel again soon. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.